Today we're going to look at conservation laws for baryon number and lepton number. So we've already seen lots of conservation laws. We had a law of conservation of momentum. And that allowed us to solve all kinds of problems. And then we had a law of conservation of energy. In chemistry, you learn the law of conservation of mass. And if you combine those two, such as we did in nuclear physics, and you realize that mass and energy can transform into one another, then you have to talk about the law of conservation of mass energy. We've also talked about the law of conservation of charge. And these were all really important because they really allowed you to keep track of what was going on, to kind of keep score. And physicists are always looking for these conservation laws. They're at the heart of physics. They underlie all of physics. And so today we want to introduce four new conservation laws. One for baryon number and three for lepton number. You'll probably remember that out of the conservation laws that we learned, the law of conservation of charge was probably the easiest. You'll be happy to know that the conservation laws that we're going to learn today are just as easy as the law of conservation of charge. And they really just come down to the idea that we've got some three quark stuff, which we call baryons, and some two quark stuff, which we call mesons, and then we've got some leptons. And because these things are really, really elemental. You, you don't have baryons suddenly disappearing so that you only get mesons and leptons. That's not possible. So the transitions between these elemental particles are very limited. We don't have baryons just becoming mesons and mesons just becoming leptons and leptons just becoming baryons, etc. So all that these conservation laws are about is about counting how many of each type of particle we have. We'll start with the baryon number. If our particle is a baryon, we give it a baryon number of 1. If it's not a baryon, if it's a meson or a lepton or something else, we give it a baryon number of 0. And if it's an antibaryon, like an antiproton, we give it a baryon number of minus 1. Let's try an example of this law. Here's an IB question. We're asked to show why this equation here is not possible. And the first thing we want to note is that the law of conservation of charge is satisfied. On this side of the equation, we have a charge of plus 1. On this side of the equation, we have a charge of plus 1 as well. So charge is OK. But let's look at baryon number. The proton, it's a baryon. So it has a baryon number of 1. The neutron, it's a baryon. It has a baryon number of 1. Proton, 1. Proton, 1. Antiproton, minus 1. Let's add them up. Left-hand side, 1 plus 1. Right-hand side, 1 plus 1 minus 1. 2 does not equal 1, and therefore the baryon number is not satisfied, and the reaction is not possible. It's that simple. And now the three lepton number rules are going to work exactly the same way as the baryon rule. The only difference is there were three types of leptons. We had electrons, and they pair up with a neutrino. So there's a electron neutrino. There are muons, and they pair up with a muon neutrino. And there are tau particles, and they team up with a neutrino that's of the tau variety. So we're going to have three rules, one for the electron variety, one for the muon variety, and one for the tau variety. So for the electron variety, if it is an electron or an electron neutrino, give it a 1. If it's not, give it a 0. And if it happens to be an anti-electron or an anti-electron neutrino, give it a minus 1. Do the same thing, do the same thing for the muon types. If it is, give it a 1. If it's not, give it a 0. If it's anti, minus 1. And the same thing for the tau leptons, both the neutrino and the tau particle. 1 if it is, 0 if it's not, negative 1 if it's an anti. 
an important illustration of these laws that we've already encountered would be beta decay. Remember the overall reaction in beta decay was that a neutron changed into a proton plus a beta particle plus an anti-electron neutrino. So let's look at the different conservation laws. We'll start with charge. Neutron has zero charge. Proton plus one. Electron negative one. Neutrino zero. So we can see that zero is equal to one plus minus one. Let's look at baryon number. Neutron, that is a baryon. Proton, that is a baryon. Electron, not a baryon. Neutrino, not a baryon. So we get one equals one. That's satisfied as well. Let's go on to the lepton electron number. That's not a lepton electron. That isn't either. That is, and this one is an anti-electron neutrino. It gets a minus one. So you'll notice here, zero is equal to plus one minus one. That one's satisfied as well. And of course, I don't have to look at the other lepton rules because we don't have any of that type of lepton. Here's an IB question. We're asked to use the conservation of lepton number and charge to deduce the nature of that particle X in the reaction. So pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. Let's start out with the charge numbers. We've got a neutrino, it's got no charge, a muon, charge of minus one. Other side of the equation, we've got an electron, that's a minus one, and we've got the charge of X. That means the charge of X has to be zero in order for the charges to balance. Let's now look at the lepton number for electron. That is an electron type, so that's a one. A muon, an electron, and X. So the electron lepton number of X must be a zero. And now let's try the lepton muon number. That's not a muon, that is a muon. That's not a muon, and then we've got x, and that means that that means the muon number of x must be a one. In other words, we've got a muon, and it's got no charge, so it must be a muon neutrino, like so. So let's summarize. Elemental particle transformations can only occur if one, charge is conserved, two, baryon number conserved, and three, if the three lepton numbers are conserved. And this is gonna allow you to tell whether or not a reaction is possible, and also to predict the nature of particles that will show up in these transformations. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.